Holly here, and today our kitchen's getting a little bit fishy. That's right, we're making Finding Dory themed Oreo Pops. Is that a problem, buddy? Huh? Huh? Do you? Do you? Do you? Yeah, my problem is that I'm so excited to see this movie, and I see billboards and ads everywhere, and I just want to see it now, and I'm getting impatient. Deep breath, Cal. Deep breath. Getting back to today's PLB treat, these Dory Oreo Pops. Oreo Pops are one of my favorite desserts. You wanna know why? Oh, pick me, pick me! You can never go wrong with Oreos, especially if they're double stuff. The only thing better than a plain Oreo is an Oreo dipped in chocolate. The only thing better than a chocolate dipped Oreo is one that looks like a Disney character. <laughs> this dessert is a little bit more on the creative side since the actual making of an Oreo Pop is super simple, so, Without further ado, let's break it down now. These Dory Oreo Pops require as many double stuff Oreos as you want, some lollipop sticks, and to decorate Dory we'll be using blue chocolate melts. Now I like to add some white chocolate melts to lighten up the color just a little bit. You'll need some yellow chocolate melts, black icing, and as you can see I've already piped some into a bag and I'm using a number three tip. You'll also need some white fondant and two edible food coloring markers, pink and black. Now for the equipment, we'll need a baking sheet lined with wax paper, toothpicks for fine tuning some decorations, and a knife. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. First things first, let's go ahead and melt our blue and white chocolate melts in the microwave. We're gonna do it in 30 second increments, setting it at 50% power and stirring every time until it's smooth. Now that the blue chocolate is melted, we're gonna take our lollipop stick and dip it into the blue chocolate about half an inch, and then insert that into the Oreo. And we dip it into the blue chocolate first because it acts as glue between the lollipop stick and the Oreo. Once the Oreo pops are assembled, let's set the baking sheet in the fridge for about five minutes to let the blue chocolate set. While the Oreo pops are in the fridge, let's get started on making Dory's fins. And for that, you'll need yellow chocolate melts and a knife. Be careful with this thing. For Dory's pectoral fins, which are the fins on the side, we'll want to cut up a yellow candy melt into our four pieces, like a T or like a cross. For her tail fin, we'll cut up a yellow candy melt into three parts, but not entirely equal. We want to make sure the middle part is a little bit larger than the outer parts. We'll just discard these. We only want the middle one for her tail fin. Taking your toothpick, let's flip the fins over so we can work on the flat side. Simply draw dash marks extending all the way to the edge of her fin. And I'm adding either four or five tick marks depending on how much space I have on the yellow candy melt. And do the same for the tail fin. Our Oreo Pops are ready to go. So now it's time to dip the Oreo Pops and add the fins. And if your blue chocolate has hardened just a little bit, you can pop it in the microwave for a few seconds and that'll melt it right back up. I'm gonna take the Oreo Pop and submerge it completely into the blue chocolate. Let the blue chocolate touch the base of the lollipop stick. Allow the excess to drip back off into the bowl and you can tap the rim of your cup if you want to. Now place it back onto the wax lined baking sheet. Quick decision, will your Dory be facing left? left or facing right. Depending on how you place your fins, that's how you'll know. Grab one quarter yellow candy melt and place it on the lower half of the face of the Oreo. For the tail, we wanna make sure the fins are facing the same direction. Insert the larger yellow candy melt at the back end of the Oreo in between the two Oreo cookies right where the stuff is. And back in the fridge, our Oreo pops go for about 10 to 15 minutes. But while they're in there, we can get started on the eyeballs. I'm using a small amount of white fondant and gently making a flat circle with my fingers about half the size of a dime. We're also gonna add Dory's side eye and that one will be a little bit smaller, maybe about the size of an eraser at the end of a pencil or size of the opening of a straw. We'll be using some of the remaining white fondant for Dory's smile, so make sure to save some for later. First, I'm gonna decorate Dory's pupils. I'll draw a smaller black circle in the middle of each piece of white fondant. I'm gonna leave some white showing up at the top for that little sparkle in her eye. Then I'll draw a little pink line on the outside of the pupil just to, you know, add a little pop of color. Now that we've completed our eyes for Dory, it's time to bring out the Oreo Pops so we can give Dory her cute little face. Taking the end of a toothpick, you wanna to dip it in the blue chocolate and dab some on the back of the larger eyeball to act as an adhesive. And then we'll just place it close to the end of the Oreo, but make sure you leave some space for the smaller eye, which will go right on the cusp of the Oreo cookie. Like this. Our Dories are starting to come to life. 
But now we have to give her some eyebrows and we gotta top her fins, so let's go back to the blue chocolate and dip our toothpick yet again. Dory's very expressionative, so we'd like to give her some height to her eyebrows with the blue chocolate. And for her top fin, you wanna make some tick marks at the edge of the Oreo cookie with the blue chocolate, so it looks a little bit rough, nothing perfect, just kinda of like little mountain peaks. Next up, we're gonna use this little beauty to decorate Dory's body. Now this is the fun part where it's not gonna be so perfect. We're gonna outline Dory's back with the black icing, and then we're gonna draw a curvy line of black icing from the top of what looks like her forehead to the base of her tail. Make sure you keep a patch of blue within the black icing area. And you can use your toothpick to evenly distribute the black icing. Last thing, Dory is so happy, so we gotta give her a big old smile. Using the black icing, once again, we're gonna give Dory her wonderful smile. The wider her mouth, the happier she is. And I'll roll out the smallest piece of white fondant with my fingers and place it at the top of her smile just to give her some teeth. Ah, she looks so cute! Now let's put our Dory Oreo Pops back in the fridge for about 15 minutes to let everything harden and set completely. Yay! Our Dory Oreo Pops are done and they look so cute! I'm loving how these Dory Oreo Pops turned out. Just makes me wanna eat them. Fish are friends, not food. Well, I hate to break it to you, Dory, but we're about to nom 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 nom. <laughs> uh, so good. There's so much chocolate, so much richness, and all the crunchies all in one bite. I hope you all enjoyed making these Dory Oreo Pops. I had a blast. I love Dory. She's so sweet, and you can't help but love her. Finding Dory comes to theaters in the United States on June 17th, and you can bet your booty I'll be there with popcorn in one hand and Dory Oreo Pops in the other but the full Dory Oreo Pops, not the half-eaten ones. Well, probably this one too, let's be honest. <laughs> hey, if there's any movie coming out that you'd like to see a PLB video tutorial on, let me know in the comments section. I'm so excited to post pics of these Finding Dory Oreo Pops on social media. Make sure you're following Pretty Little Bakers. The links are in the description below. And if you make your very own Finding Dory Oreo Pops, Send me pictures. I'll gladly repost them and retweet them. Thanks everyone for watching this week's Pretty Little Bakers video tutorial. Don't forget to head over to prettylittlebakers.com for the full recipe and the blog. And while you're at it, go ahead and click that subscribe button so you can get your weekly dose of PLB fun-sized desserts. I'll see y'all next time.